Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Geometry Common Core Regents. So we're doing this one question at a time. Here is question 10. Jaden is comparing two cones. The radius of the base of cone A is twice as large as the radius of the base of cone B. The height of cone B is twice the height of cone A. The volume of K, cone A is and then, you know, all the choices we have here are comparing cone, the volume of cone A to cone B. So, so let's just write out, let's draw and write out uh, each of these cones on the side here. So we have cone A, let's say it looks like this. And then cone B, it sounds like is taller and has like a smaller radius. So the radius of the base of cone A is twice as large as the radius. Of, so I'm just going to plug in numbers here. So we could do, you know, variables x and 2x, but I'm just going to plug in numbers. So, so these could be anything, but I'm just going to use makeup numbers. So the base of cone A is twice as large as the radius of the base of cone B. So let's say the radius right here is 2, and it's twice where r is 2 here. And then here we're going to say r is equal to 1 because the base of cone A is the, the radius is twice as large as B. And the height of cone B, so now we have the height of cone B, is twice the height of cone A. So what if we say the height here is equal to 4? And then here we're going to say it's half of that, which is equal to 2. So now we need to remember what the volume of a cone is. So let's just write that volume of a cone is pi r squared times h over 3. So now let's try to find the volume of a and the volume of b and see the difference. So we have volume of a, so this is equal to pi r squared, so 2 squared is 4, times h, 2 over 3. So this will give us pi times 8 over 3. And now when we look at the volume of B, the second cone, we get pi r squared, which is just one. So times one times h over three times four over three. So this gives us pi times four thirds. So notice that cone A is twice as big as cone B in terms of volume, because here we have eight thirds pi and then B is four thirds pi. So we look at our choices, um, the first one happens to be the right choice. The volume of cone A is twice the volume of cone B, so we know that this is our answer. For question 11, we have a regular hexagon is rotated about its center. Which degree measures will carry the regular hexagon onto itself? So which degree measure will carry the regular hexagon onto itself? So remember a hexagon ha is a six-sided polygon. So let's draw that out quick. So we want to basically, what the question is asking is like, if we rotated this, um, to what what degree would we have to rotate this for it to land onto itself? So to figure that out, I'm just going to find out how many degrees are between are between each of these. So so we're assuming they're evenly spaced because it is a regular hexagon. So since it's regular, they're all gonna be evenly spaced. So this isn't exactly drawn to scale. But see we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six um, triangles. Let me draw this a little bit bigger. So we have six triangles, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we know that a circle has 360 degrees. So if we divide this evenly by six, it's going to give us 60 degrees. So that means we're going to have 60 degrees here and here and here and all the way around. So this is actually going to notice each of these little triangles is going to be an equilateral triangle. So this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees. So that means this whole angle here altogether is going to be 120 degrees. So if we were to turn it, we would for it to land onto itself again, we would have to turn it 120 degrees. Which gives us our answer, which is choice three. Number 12, in triangle MAH below, MT is, perpendic is the perpendicular bisector 
of AH, which statement is not always true. So MAH is isosceles, that looks correct. MAH is isosceles, right, because these two sides are equal and we have this perpendicular bisector, splitting it in half. MAT is isosceles, so that's not always true because this height can be any value, right, right here. This meaning that since this can be any height, it doesn't have to be equal to this section right here for, the, for this triangle MAT. So, so here, this does not have to be equal to this in order for this to be a perpendicular bisector, right? So that's why two is our answer. Triangle MAT uh, is not always gonna be isosceles. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions, link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.